So we're here in the heart of Red Hook, Brooklyn, in what appears to be an abandoned plant nursery. But what's inside this building is one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. Let's take a look. So we're here on the floor of the Van Brunt Stillhouse. I'm here with Derek Slesselman, the founder of Van Brunt Stillhouse. You are a fermenter. A fermenter, a distiller, a bottler. All right, so you started out with this, which is your first little uh, gadget that you played with. Yep. So tell us the story, how you got into making, you're make, what are you making here? You're making whiskey? Making whiskey, grappa, and rum okay. at the moment. Uh, I was a home brewer and started reading up on all these bulletin boards online about uh, people who were doing home distilling. This is a thousand year old technology. It was you know, invented basically in Portugal or, or in the Iberian Peninsula a, a thousand years ago. And, uh, and it still works great. So this obviously didn't work for you as a, in terms of scale. Uh, you know, you know this, this produces about a pint of spirits and uh, with every time you run it. And while it's fun to make it gets Spirits. frustrating. It's, uh, it's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> but what you're doing is you've made an artisanal product out in the middle of Brooklyn. So walk us through how this is made. Uh, well, you know, uh, alcohol is, uh, is not something you just buy from a store. You, you create it. And, and you don't create it. Yeast creates it. So uh, yeast eat sugars. And the, uh, and the byproduct of eating that sugar is, is alcohol. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, the different spirit categories are the spirit categories because of the substrate that's used. So with rum, it's sugar, and with whiskey, it's cereals, grains, and with uh, brandy, like grappa, it's, um, it's, it's fruit. Mm -hmm. So what we do um, is we put whatever that ingredient is in these fermenters, and then we add yeast. And um, it's honestly one of my favorite parts of the process. Uh, it, it's the, the, the Germans before um, before microbiology uh, called it God's stuff, or, or uh, and it, I, to me that is perfect. It's it's really miraculous every time you see it. I start with a like a handful of dried grains that are inactive yeast, and then you put it in the in the fermenter, and within a day it's a boiling vat of of sweetness. And the boiling is just a billion little animals bumping into each other. Okay. So then you eventually kill those animals over here. <laughs> it's true. Well, actually, the alcohol kills them eventually. <laughs> they, don't, they, 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 they kill themselves by overindulging. Okay. Uh, and then once, once that uh, alcohol is done, um, we bring it over here. We use this pump um, uh, to, to pump it through a hose uh, over to the still. It's made by a company called Carl. Uh, it, it's a German still. It was designed for fruit brandies, uh, but it's a very versatile still. Uh, the Germans are known for their engineering, and, and I would agree. We pump the, the wash or the um, mashed, whatever you, know, when you want, whatever you want to call it, into the pot. And then we heat it up with steam, and then the, the vapors rise up out of the pot into the helmet. At the, that column above the pot is called the helmet. As it gets up to you know, 70 degrees Celsius, those things are starting to come off and they rise up the helmet and then they go across uh, on this pipe down into the bottom of the column. And, um, and then as the heat builds up, they slowly rise up the column. Now between each one of those portholes is a plate. As the vapor goes up and hits that puddle, it actually becomes uh, liquid again. And the thing that's remarkable about that uh, is that that, that that intensifies the alcohol every time that happens. So I have five plates in my column so every time the alcohol rises up through one of those plates, it gets a little bit stronger. Whiskey is created generally in a pot still, and that's because you don't want to overly rectify it. The whiskey has the flavor it has because it's not been overly distilled. If you overly distill whiskey, you end up with vodka. Okay. So once that vapor hits this other cylinder, silver stainless steel column, uh, that's full of cold water, and that chills that vapor down back into liquid. So what happens after that? Well, uh, so, so all spirits coming off the still are clear, um, and we, they tend to be very strong. For example, our, our rum is 90% alcohol. Uh, you don't want to drink that. We dilute it with a little bit of filtered water, 
and then we, um, we put it in barrels. All right, let's take a look at the barrels. I use a number of different barrels. The bulk of my barrels that I'm relying on are, are these sort of medium-sized barrels. They're white oak, uh, coopered in, in uh, Minnesota, and they are small because uh, as a new distillery, I need to sort of move products to market a little faster than, than the big guys. And the smaller barrel size imparts more wood characteristics faster because the surface to volume ratio is lower. Okay. So in terms of wood characteristics, what are you expecting out of something like these white oak ones? It imparts a nice vanilla, subtle and whiskey and a little stronger in the rum. And they impart some caramel flavors and, and all those, uh, that oak flavor that you tend to associate with whiskey. Now, are there ways to impart that, I guess, chemically? Is this a chemical process, or you know, would you say this is more of an art? Uh, this is definitely an art. People, for the last 10, 15 years, have been trying to beat uh, Mother Nature, and uh, they have not. You know, that's the, you know, some winemakers put oak chips in their Chardonnay, and, and um, you can taste it. And, and you, can't, uh, you can't replicate a, a barrel. Some people will wrap the barrels in plastic, that one of the things that's a uh, downside of barrels is that, that uh, they're porous, uh, which is why things age so nicely in them, but you also lose some of your spirit. It's called an angel share, which is a f term people are somewhat familiar with. So I guess the final step is putting these things into bottles. Uh, yep, yep. Uh, as a small distillery, my bottling line is incredibly low tech. Uh, I, I put the spirits in a stainless steel barrel um, and make them the right strength. Uh, in, in, for example, in my rum, I'm blending different bottles together. With my whiskey, they tend to be just um, single barrels or two barrels that I'm putting together. Uh, but the rum, I'm blending different ages and different things. Uh, and then once that's all blended and they're right, ready for bottle, I, uh, I put four bottles on this uh, bottle filler, push the button, a timer goes off and it fills the requisite amount of spirit in each bottle. Our audience is obviously wondering why we're doing this. This isn't really a high-tech operation, but this is definitely something that you love doing. You're an entrepreneur. Uh, this isn't your first job. This is something that you've grown to love, and you've gone from that tiny little still to these bottles. Uh, what did it really take? Uh, you know, largely the most important factor was was uh, learning the business end of things, and um, and this isn't a, a, a cheap venture. So I had to get investors on board and 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 presenting all the business material in a, manner, in a manner that investors were uh, comfortable writing checks when you have no track record. Mm -hmm. I, I work in television and, and no one believed that a television person could distill booze. <laughs> so, um, you know, part of it was me going out and distilling and on, on my dime at other people's facilities and, and then showing that product off to people and, and then slowly Working out the the business plan and the and the logistics of and it's always a juggling when you do it when you're an entrepreneur it's always a juggling act here. Uh, you have a hat that's a fundraising hat and you have a hat that's a manager hat and you have a hat that's a creator hat and um, and you know that's one of the biggest challenges is wearing all of those hats sometimes all at the same time. All right, perfect. I guess the last question is: Do you guys take credit cards? Because I'm going to need probably like two or three cases. <laughs> Derek, thank you very much. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. Thanks for coming. I'm John Biggs with TechCrunch Makers. Thanks for watching.